Hello everybody and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian and I'm here to bring you another episode in our continuing series about the constellations. Last time we examined the circumpolar constellation Cepheus and the variable star Delta Cephei. Today we're going to shift back to the fall constellations. Remember that during the fall we use the autumn square to find our constellations. The autumn square is a large regular square of stars high overhead after the sun sets in mid-November. The square shares the upper left-hand corner star with the constellation Andromeda, the princess, who is formed from a curving V-shape of stars. We've seen previously in this series that below Andromeda's legs is a small triangular constellation named Triangulum. We're going to continue in that same direction, where we'll find this small curve of stars. When connected with this other star off to the left, these stars form the constellation Aries, or the Ram. I usually think of the curve as representing the head and horns of Aries, and the line as being the ram's back, but there are many different depictions of Aries throughout history. Aries is a very old constellation dating back to the times of ancient Babylon. A special location in Aries interests astronomers. It's called the first point of Aries, but to understand what it is, we need to take a look at the sun. We can map the motion of the sun through the background stars over the course of the year. Drawing that line, we get this, the ecliptic. But that's not the only line we can draw in the sky. We can project Earth's equator up into the sky like this. This is the celestial equator. Anything on this line will appear directly overhead for a person on the equator at some point during the day as Earth rotates. And hey, the ecliptic is tilted versus the equator and it crosses the equator at two points. At two times during the year, the sun appears directly overhead on the equator. That only happens on the first days of spring and fall, the equinoxes. So which of these points is which? During the fall, from Michigan, the days are getting shorter and the sun is reaching lower in the sky. The sun must appear south of the equator. During the spring, the opposite is true. Therefore, where the sun crosses the equator traveling north, that must mark the northern spring equinox. And indeed, that is how we define the beginning of the seasons astronomically. And because that point marking the spring equinox is in the constellation Aries, we call it the first point of Aries. No wait, that's not in Aries at all. That's in some other constellation. That's in the constellation Pisces, the fish. What gives? Okay, let's go back. Why don't the ecliptic and the celestial equator line up? That they don't must mean that the Earth is kind of tipped over on its side. It's tipped over by 23 and a half degrees from perpendicular. We saw this before when we talked about the North Star and the North Celestial Pole. Remember that over the course of thousands of years, the Earth is wobbling on its axis, like a toy top that's slowing down. It takes 26,000 years for the Earth to complete one wobble. This motion is called precession. It's so slight that over a human lifetime, you won't notice any changes. But astronomy is an endeavor that spans the generations, the result of thousands of years of careful study. This point in the sky was identified some 2,000 years ago. Back then, taking into account the wobble of the Earth, it would have appeared just at the extreme edge of Aries. And in the intervening time, it's exited Aries into Pisces. In some sense, this is the age of Pisces. In time, the first point of Aries will continue traveling until it leaves Pisces and enters the constellation Aquarius, thus beginning the Age of Aquarius, when the sun's appearance in Aquarius will mark the beginning of northern spring. Calling this crossing point the first point of Aries is a relic of an earlier generation of astronomers. It is a sort of time capsule that helps us realize the effect of very slight motions over immense spans of time. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for Aries the Ram in the autumn sky. And take a moment to ponder the generations of explorers who have mapped these stars, and the generations more yet to come. That's it for today. Next time we'll explore another constellation. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies. <laughs>